Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's once again Friday afternoon. It's August 11th, 2023. Just about 30 minutes to go to the cash close here. Are we headed into a technology volatility storm? That is the question here, of course, on this weekend's update. Right down to business. Look, S&P's big, big change throughout the course of the week. That is, yeah, we're seeing a lot of two-sided trade people. It has opened up plenty of opportunities. This was a, you know, an extremely heavy trading week for me versus some of, well, the rest of this summer. I mean, you look at like June, July, we come into August, eh, a little sell-side activity last week. This week, interestingly enough, you know, look at the uh, the Nasdaq it got hit a little bit, but um, as I say, interestingly enough, the SPX is uh, well. As I said, it's going to close here in about 25 minutes, and it is almost massively unchanged on the week. Uh, nevertheless, though, that two sided trade, as I said, it really opened up the marketplace. Let's get started here in our discussion regarding. Hey, look. This technology volatility storm, and it very well may be underway. And I'm actually going to try to point out a couple of aspects here on this weekend's update involving, look, seven stocks got us obviously back to SPX 4,600. Meanwhile, you know, you take a look at the NASDAQ. I mean, it's a never, never land. However, how many people are really looking at it's already come off exactly a thousand handles in the NQ on a percentage basis. You know, we can put numbers to that here in a moment, but I don't think people are looking right now as to some very critical levels that are being hit. And I'm actually going to show you that here momentarily. Before I get there, one of the very first things that I want to mention on this weekend's update was something that I was looking for extensively in the last couple of weeks. And that was a high correlation factor. We're home. Look, what I mean by that is inside of the S&P 100, I'm just emphatic about this. You know, I look at this advanced decline line and yeah, I use the S&P 100. You can use the S&P 500. It's fine. Whatever, whatever does it for you. But you want okay, about 90% of products on one side of trade or the other for what we would term full-blown correlation. And we saw that a number of times throughout the course of this week. And as soon as I saw that, it's like fire, because you knew you're going to have heavy two-sided trades. Statistical arbitrage kicks in. Look, the point being, and I'm not going to you know, spend 20 minutes talking about like correlation properties here. It's something that we cover just in, with incredible depth inside of Theo Trade, but the moment we hit those staggeringly high degrees of correlation, okay, at that point it's on, and it's a complete, okay, change of gears for the marketplace, and that's the one aspect that I want to have resonate with you. It doesn't necessarily pertain to just, it's sell side activity. Look, I'll look for correlation to the upside or the downside. It's not just about sell side activity, people, okay? It's about two-sided trade. And the moment that we saw it, we latched onto it and that's exactly what we got. Correlation comes to life, okay? You better shift gears with that marketplace because now we're gonna get some two-sided trade. Volatility is gonna open up. And that's exactly what I was discussing on Last weekend's update, it was a lack of correlation, like we were seeking that out. We got it this week. Hopefully, some of you picked up on that, okay, shifted gears and are starting to allocate a bit more. All right, let's start to talk expressly about technology, okay? And again, the big question this weekend's update, are we headed into a tech vol storm? And the reason that I bring that into question is, have you looked at some of the levels? in, well, I mean, the marquee stocks. What do you want to call them? The Magnificent Seven? Look, I don't care at this point, okay? But the returns of the S&P 500 on a year-to-day basis, I mean, they're just 
really, it's almost all predicated on what those seven stocks did. And I know that a lot of people will they'll argue, okay, what are you going to argue? Let me see other sectors that matter, energy. And I'm going to cover this, energy, who, but still my heart, it's now up 6%. But most of the return in energy, check this out, most of the return in energy, which is outside its expected move, but almost all of that return came in like the last maybe two to three weeks. Okay, the point I'm trying to make here, just look, it was only up earlier this week, basically 2%. Now it's up 6%. So it's spurted to life, which is exactly one of the points I'm going to make. The other major sector out there, of course, is financials. What have they done? They're massively unchanged. So in effort to just, you know, calm the hearts and minds in here. And look, bottom line is, yeah, you had seven stocks. And seven stocks actually got the entire marketplace where it uh, presently is. And you do have to have concern because the NASDAQ was up. Okay, about 46% year-to-date basis, now only up 38%. There is slippage in the NASDAQ, specifically if you look at the QQQ and you apply auto expected moves. What do we have this week? Did you know that the Qs are actually close to their lower edge of the expected move? Okay, whereas the SPX, as I said a moment ago, is eh, kind of unchanged. It's down mildly. Like this week, though, it's all about NASDAQ. Here critical levels. Let me get to them because I've covered this a lot recently. I'm going to go like just kind of glance right through it. Microsoft, I believe that the 320 level is absolutely critical. Where are we trading right now? Basically 320. You get under 320, this could actually turn into a little bit of a free for all. So, you know, with that idea, 320 inside of Microsoft, and I'll start with that, that's hands and feet inside of the vehicle at all times. You start to get under 320, this could actually, you know, just turn into a selling onslaught. 300 is not far behind that one. Next on the docket, we go from Microsoft and we jump immediately to Tesla. Tesla is and has been kind of a roller coaster, all right? And what I mean by that, it's a roller coaster, you know, ride all the time, but we're coming off the 300 level, okay? And it's been basically a straight shot down to 240, okay? Uh, I think at this point, that literally at the 240 level, okay? You start to lose that. I mean, you're talking uh, under 200 is, is no problem. So there could be, again, you're seeing like Microsoft aligned to a critical level. I believe you're seeing Tesla aligned to a critical level. Let's talk a bit about NVIDIA. NVIDIA, okay, I'm not sure this is a critical level. I would put 400 as being kind of critical, but look, NVIDIA is just seeing an onslaught of sell side. And this has been rather unscathed. One aspect uh, worth mentioning when it comes to NVIDIA, you know, from uh, from some of the recent highs, Okay, to where it presently is, it is uh, almost a uh, 14%. It is a 14% decline. From some of the recent highest present value, it's 14% decline. How does that grab you? Because we're beyond corrective territory right now. Like if you were to look at this and be like, it's a bull market, it's a bear market. Well, this is uh, on its way to uh, correction is 10%, 20% decline over here. Would of course be a, a full-blown, uh, it's a bear. Then everybody's screaming about AI being a, a bearish you know, marketplace. And I'm telling you right now, you better pay attention. Okay, after NVIDIA, let's go take a look at uh, Meta. Meta has remained relatively unscathed, right? Okay, until this week. This week, I mean, last week it cracked outside the lower edge of the expected move. This week, though, hits the lower edge again. So this one is, again, appears to be some mild sell side activity. But again, that 300 level, right, appears rather pivotal. Moving from there, last but definitely at least Apple. Apple is always a tough conversation to have because, you know, people are just diehards. I don't think that the Apple level starts to come into play till like, oh, maybe in the that 170 handle. OK, but Apple is okay, unequivocally in, uh, again, full blown corrective territory. How far is it down right now? OK, and, and again, I'm not measuring it off this big reactionary high. I'm just measuring it okay, off one of the recent highs. And it is down right now just about 10%. So you are in corrective territory. Again, all I'm doing is just drawing a little trend line to where we presently are. Okay, you are in corrective territory there with uh, just about a 10% decline inside of Apple. So enough said on that particular front. You know that you've got critical levels okay, on many of the major tech stocks. Might I make an argument over here? If you're looking for opportunity, look towards Amazon, completely unscathed, Google, like literally totally unscathed. If there's going to be a short in a marketplace, 
It's going to be those two. And uh, I don't mind saying uh, I am actually establishing short positions here. Okay, I'm down mildly in Google. So in Google, I've established a short position. I'm down about 3% on that uh, at present time. Amazon, Amazon, I've actually got nothing on right now, but I'm actually uh, eh, I'm thinking about putting on okay, a, a bearish in out. And again, it's not about wanting to be bearish just in Amazon or bearish in Google. It's about the fact that those okay, are strong in what is, you know, the monsters of tech are relatively weak in there. Okay, push all of that aside for just a moment, right? So critical levels are hitting tech, but critical levels in tech, okay, do not necessarily, you know, portend that tech is going to sell off. Tech is selling off right now, okay? But to answer the question, if we're actually headed into a full-blown volatility storm, I argue you got to look over at the bonds and the notes, okay? So bonds, first of all, okay, we're basically right into recent lows. We're pressing right to lows. So where we're trading right now is unequivocally critical threshold. If you actually take a look at the interest rate, that's TYX, that's the interest rate for the 30, okay? This is the 30 year. We're approaching close to 4.3%, but even more of a pressing issue in my mind is the 10 year, okay? The 10 year, uh, if it closes, basically is closed, but if it, if it closes here uh, right where it's at, which it will, okay, you are basically at closing lows. There's a big reactionary low, you know, from uh, from a couple of days ago, but uh, you're going to basically close the uh, at the low, which uh, pertains, of course, to the TNX. This is the 10 year. And again, the 10 year we cross above like 4.2. I warned you guys at 4% that this thing was going to go parabolic and it did and it pulled back. OK, here we go again. We're going to retest some of the highs of interest rates. Now, what's interesting in here is when you have to start pulling up a chart here, you got to go like a three year. Eh, that doesn't even do it justice. Pull up a 10 year. That doesn't do it justice. Pull up max chart. Pull up a maximum chart, okay, on the TNX. This is the 10 year to see how wild of a move. Okay. Look, I, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. Okay. If you tell me, all right, that there's no recession pending, you tell me about a soft landing and you look, okay, at what the 10 year is doing right now and the implications of the 10 year, all right, they're massive. There's just, I just don't, don't buy into the whole soft landing. I don't buy into the, there's not going to be a recession. Okay. You're not going from a 1%. That's, let's just round it down. 1%. Okay. It, it got obviously to a half a percent, but that's 10 year at uh, basically 1%. And uh, here we are, okay. Approaching what? Almost 4.2% without inflicting absolutely, okay. Horrendous damage to financial markets. And that's uh, the one thing is when you talk about like a tech vol storm, okay? I believe now it's technology that is going to feel the brunt of the 10 year. The 10 year cracks above 4.2%, okay? Look out. At that point I really think it's on. Moreover, I've noticed some I would say scary movement over here. So the interest rates up, like you get that. And interest rates being up can cause a little fear and loathing in the markets. But I've seen a little bit of a move, obviously, now back into the dollar, okay? And the dollar just looks odd at this point. So there's strength inside of the dollar. And it got really weak, touched down to 100. The dollar, though, and you're like, well, yeah, but it's not nearly as high as, like, look, here's the bottom line, though, with the dollar, okay? Why are people buying dollar right now? Why are they buying dollar, all right? There's just not a lot of asset classes to go to. Are, and the question that looms over the dollar, are they buying dollar because starting to rotate capital out of anything and everywhere, okay? I mean, there's just not a lot of safe places to go right now around the world. You know, where do you go? I'm going to go buy the euro. I don't buy it. <laughs> Literally, I don't buy it, okay? You're not buying the euro. You're definitely not buying a pound. Where are you going to go, all right? And they're moving towards the dollar. I am looking at this as being a highly, okay, defensive strategy at this point, okay? So you have bonds that are pressing lows, which is interest rates effectively pressing through highs. You've got strength in the dollar. You've got obviously, okay, monsters of tech at absolutely critical levels, okay? Correlation has come to life. Here's one last one that I think is, is also, okay, needs to really be thought of. And that's, I think we're seeing a rotation, like a last, gasp and a rotation into energy, okay, as kind of a safe play. So we're talking about like, 
you know, inflation and supposedly inflation is supposed to be cooling. Why are we buying energy? Why are we buying energy again? Okay. Oh, why are we buying like, you know, and this is where people will argue with oil. Ah, oh, it's OPEC. And now OPEC is, is, is they're going to have cuts over there. Like, I got it. Okay. I got it. But that doesn't describe why they're actually buying, okay, you know, the energy stocks themselves. This has been a huge bid. My belief, okay, is if you look at the year-to-date percentages, I was saying, this thing will like, again, you're a couple of days removed. It was basically flat on the year. It's now up 6%. It's a massive move, just a massive move up inside of energy. And by the way, I opened up a bearish position in energy, which I'll show you here in just a moment. I think this is a rotation. I think it's asset managers, okay, that are starting to get very nervous inside of tech and are rotating out, okay? Those are factors that lead me to believe that we actually are on the cusp of a little bit of a technology volatility storm. Uh, meanwhile, even products like Volatility Index or VVIX, they're starting to get amped up, but they almost feel like suppressed, still holding back, like they're waiting for that big punch of volatility. Truth be told, when it comes to looking at volatility products now, whether you're looking at VIX, whether you're looking at VVIX, okay, no matter what you want to look at in terms of volatility products, they're not leading indicators most of the time. They're going to be lagging indicators because uh, there's so many premium sellers out there. So you won't know that volatility explodes okay, by looking at like VIX. You'll know volatility explodes after by looking at VIX is the point that I'm trying to, uh, to make with that. So uh, again, a lot of factors that are leading us, I believe, head on into a, a tech vol storm. And, you know, look, you can say what you want about the marketplace. It's, look, it's going to be tech. If we're going down, it has to be tech. And, you know, that, that original point that I made okay, needs to be reiterated. And that's this. You did have the NQ, okay, a couple of weeks removed from it at 16,000. And I don't think enough people are paying attention that... It's, you know, it wasn't really damaged, okay, to the last two weeks. I had a couple of dings, a couple of dents, but it's starting to take on some damage. When you look at a thousand NQ points, but don't get me wrong, we could have an absolutely wicked rally early next week, a rally that I would short into at this point, okay? And I am absolutely unequivocally bearish. And you can see, you know, I'm short here, I'm short there, I'm short some Google, Okay, I'm short everything in a partridge in a pear tree. My aggregated negative spy delta right now, I'm just over about 3,000 deltas. This is just this one position. I'm aggregating to about the negative 3,000 spy deltas. All right, okay. Next, get your trade on. This week's profits and losses. As I was saying, kind of kicking off, I had a busy week. Like I was rocking this week. Uh, one of the first things that I did, you know, I like to show some of the trades in here. I don't think enough people do this. So seven days. What did I do over seven days? One of the first things I did, I closed. I closed my XLF at a bearish uh, spread, an in-out spread in XLF. I'm just kind of highlighting on the screen over here. Okay. It's a bearish spread inside of the XLF to close that. Close it for a 55% gain. Next. Okay. Uh, in the S&P. Okay, options on futures and S&P options on futures. In fact, I'll just show you these trades. Okay, I closed both a 4,900 call and a 4,800 call. Okay, uh, I had those on for quite a while. It took a while to actually make 50% because the marketplace was rallying. But I really, I just ripped apart my inventory, which is awesome. <laughs> I was able to break down the inventory and close stuff profitably. I mean, look, it's been, it was a rough seven weeks because I was selling premium in the midst of one of the most wild up moves that people have ever seen, right? And I'm selling calls and all of a sudden, okay, two weeks later and, you know, just, just gold, Jerry, it was gold. And we're right back on top of it. So I closed out of the XLF. I closed out of uh, S&P options on futures. Then my spy, okay, if I cruise over here to Tasty, all right, here on uh, Tasty, you can actually see a spy trade where I closed that for just over uh, 50%, and that's a decent sized trade of the 485 calls, okay? What else did I do over here? Ah, NVIDIA, okay? NVIDIA short calls, what did I do? Close some NVIDIA short calls. I believe the NVIDIA calls, that was today, right? So there you go, NVIDIA short calls. I bought back the uh, 650 calls. That was just, uh, I believe, over a 62% gain on the NVIDIA short calls. Then I went out with the spiders, okay? Oh, this is a fun one. Okay, I did a bunch of stuff in the spiders this week, but uh, one in particular, okay, 
just just wait for it wait for it let's just isolate to two days so you guys can actually see this okay we went out and actually bought intraday intraday puts dollar 34 closed them out for uh for four bucks and i gotta tell you that people right there okay let's thank the correlation gods for that trade uh, it's about a 300% return on that one. And then last, but definitely not least, I opened a position in the XLE. I put on a bearish position in the XLE, largely predicated on the idea that, okay, we're just cracking outside of expected moves left and right. I think this is actually overdue for a little bit of a pullback inside of the energy sector. And that's exactly what I will do is uh, come in here. I'm 35 days out. It's a slightly out of the money spread at this point. Look at the size in there, okay? That's us. All right, Woof. get your trade on this week's profits and losses. The other trade that I'm actually seeking right now, as I was saying, I'm actually uh, teeing up either an Amazon or Google trade uh, early next week because I want to be in the short technology business and do that, obviously, uh, energy looking for a pullback, but I think I'd see another, another nice pullback inside of tech. So why did I wait in tech? Because I think uh, on Monday, tech could actually bounce. And if it does bounce, it's actually going to afford me the ability to short at a significantly better price. Last, but definitely not least here on this weekend's update, as we do each and every week, cover a little bit about the expected move this week. Okay. Lackluster. Very lackluster. You know, I do not often say this. I do not often say this. But when you look back on the week, okay, where are we actually going to close for the most part? a handful of handles lower. I mean, we started, and again, where uh, where I'm highlighting on the screen right here, we started at 44.80 on the week. We're at 44.63, okay? We're listlessly lower on the week. Obviously, as I pointed out, the NASDAQ is much closer to the lower edge of its expected move, but the S&Ps held up. Why did the S&Ps hold up, okay? Was it, again, the financials? Okay, if you look at the financials from an auto expected move, no, they're massively unchanged. You realize, okay, what held markets together was the energy sector. And that's actually why I'm more concerned about markets is, yeah, you know it's not good when energy has to rally that much. It looks like a capital rotation, okay? And that capital rotation is like a last, you know, gasp, if you will, to hold markets. But one of the things I always point out, and I was talking about on Wednesday night's video, almost each and every week, we hit upper and or lower edge of expected move. Neither were hit this week. We didn't even get close, okay? But what we did see this week is a multitude of reversals. We reversed from lower to high. We reversed from highs to lows. Thursday was wicked. We were ripping on our way to the upper edge of the expected move and reversed, okay, completely on the day, up over 50 handles, okay, and had at one point almost a 70 handle reversal. It was sweet. So it was a week that was not without its volatility. There's a lot of volatility this week, okay, even though the week is going to finish, you know, again, down mildly, it's a week filled with volatility. Expect some of the same next week. You know, is the CPI coming out? No, that was this week. You know, I don't even mention the CPI and the PPI. Push it aside, okay? News announcements now are one thing, all right? Chocolate-covered hand grenades. They just chuck them into the marketplace. It's like any news announcement that comes out, okay? Whatever it is next week. And there's more, you know, data being dropped next week. It's a fuse in the marketplace, nothing more. Next week, we're looking right now at about a $67 expected move. Granted, we're coming off a $78 expected move. Okay, so if they contracted a little bit to 67, but we don't have to deal with a CPI and a PPI. Again, there's still some big news drops. There's still going to be obviously some Fed speak next week. Okay, but again, keep your hands and feet inside of the vehicle at all times because this last week, we did not tag upper or lower edge of the expected move. Okay, almost unequivocally next week, we're going to do just that. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye.